with geometry generator styles in QGIS, you can do so many things. It's pretty much unlimited. It just depends on your imagination. And for this example, we're going to use the file that I've got on my screen. And the link to that is in the description for the video. This is actually a geo package of hexagons, but that's not what we're looking at right now. We're looking at fairly randomly positioned or randomly rotated triangles because I've used the geometry generator style to create these triangles and rotate them randomly. Now, if I double click the layer and go to symbology and then click on the end of the symbol patch, the drop down there, I can hit configure symbol. And then we can see a geometry generator is applied. And in this case, I've used it to make a triangle from three points and I have also added a buffer of minus 2000 meters and I've added a random rotation for each shape between minus 25 and 25 degrees. Now that's more of a complicated expression. So let's just cancel this and I will go to the style button and I'm going to restore the default style for this layer and click OK. So this is the actual file, what it looks like if you download it. Now, what I'll do first of all is I will imagine that I want to create some space between the hexagons. So here's how we can do that. Before we do that, though, I'll just move it over a bit so we can see it when I make the changes. I'll double click the layer. I'm on symbology and then I'll click simple fill. The symbol layer type is what we need to change to geometry generator. Now, you can just type in here, but what I would usually do is click on the expression button because it allows you to search for the expressions, but also it should auto-complete as you type. So I'll type in buffer. See what I mean? It auto complete so that it allows you to just click on different expressions. I'll hit an open bracket and then it'll just have a little kind of tooltip pop up showing you the different parameters you can add. So in this case, I want a gap between hexagons. So I can actually add a negative buffer. In this case, I'll use 3000 meters. And I think that'll do. We don't need to put in any more parameters. I'll click OK and then apply and we see that we get a gap. So I'll click OK on that and I'll go to Project Properties. I'm going to change the background color black back to default. I'll click OK. Now, I'll double click on this just to say one thing. In the geometry generator, I used minus 3000 and that's because my data has meters as a unit. If you're not sure about this, go to Information and then you should see within that what the units in your data set are. The reason I mention that is because if you're using a data set and it's in degrees and you use 3000, it's gonna create something impossible to see uh, because degrees relates to degrees in the earth, 90 degrees north or south or 180 degrees east or west. So if your data is in decimal degrees and you're using geometry generator then probably instead of minus 3000, you'd like use minus 0 0.1 or something. So just be aware if you try and follow this and you're getting weird results, just check what the units of your data set are. Okay, so let's change that number to minus five and click apply. Okay, great. Now what we could do actually is if we wanted to, we could use a random function here. So if I type rand and an open bracket, I can type minus 1000. Right, so let's do minus 5000 comma minus 1000. I'll hit apply there. I think I've done it the wrong way round. Minus 1000. Oh no, I didn't do it the wrong way round, sorry. I just need to do a bracket at the end. Apply that, there we go. So what's happening here is the buffer is randomly between minus 5,000 and minus 1,000. If I change it to minus 10,000 to minus 1,000, we can see the different sizes of the hexagons here. Now, of course, if you had a, a column in your data set which indicated a value like, I don't know, employment or population, you could use that value there. So that's another thing you can do. It's very flexible here. 
Now let's change this because we don't want to use hexagons. So we'll go back to just having geometry there. And if I hit apply, it'll go back to normal. What I want to do now is I want to make these circles. So let's click the expression. And I'm going to type, well, I'm going to start typing minimal. Minimal. And then I see minimal circle. And I can double click that. And I hit an open bracket. All we need here is geometry, comma, and then I'm going to add segments. This uh, parameter will make the circle smoother. So I usually put in 500. And then click OK, we'll get a smooth circle. Of course, this is a minimal circle around the hexagon, so it's a bit big. So I'll need to add a buffer to make the circle smaller. There's various ways you could do this, but this is an easy way to do it. Buffer, comma, minus 5,000. Let's try that. And we'll hit apply. Now we've got a nice set of circles. If I wanted to make them a little bit closer together, I could change that from minus 5,000 to minus 4,000. Okay, that's probably a bit better. And that allows us to change the shape. So this is not altering the actual original file. It's just changing how it's displayed. And that means that we can create different kinds of maps without actually having to create any new shape files or geo packages or anything like that. And if we wanted to style this using categories, different colors we can still do that so if I go up to single symbol and hit categorized and choose as the value the country column so it's going to be colored by UK country and I hit classify and apply the geometry generator is still applied but it's not always obvious where it is now but if you go to the symbol patch and click the drop down at the end and then configure symbol then you'll see the geometry generator there so that's something that's not always immediately obvious now we're going to go back here to click on the expression button and I'm going to delete this. And if I go down to my recent ones, the triangle one that I used should be listed there. Yep. But I'm actually going to do the one where I rotated it randomly. So this is, brings us back to the start. And when you're writing these expressions, it doesn't matter if things are split over multiple lines. Um, I usually do that to give myself a bit of white space. So there's a, there's, a, there's a number of different functions here. I'm using the make triangle function to create the triangles. I'm using the buffer to make them a bit smaller because I've got this minus 2000 number. And I'm using rotate to rotate them randomly with the rand function between minus 15 and 15 degrees. If I missed a bracket, something like that, it would say expression is invalid so sometimes you just need to be careful and then I'll click OK and OK again and I'll apply that and if I click OK and then if I hit refresh a few times or actually if I move the map it will redraw if I hit refresh it may take a moment to redraw then we'll get a like slightly different random rotation there the one thing I've done here in this video is I've just shown some random examples, but it would be more normal to rotate things by a value in your data set, for example. So you could easily do that. You could use a column in your data set. But once you understand how Geometry Generator works, then you can start to apply all sorts of interesting styles. And you can use those in combination with columns in your data set that contain values. For example, like I said, employment or income or those kinds of things. And one last thing, you don't have to apply these expressions to every single part of your file. So I'll show you how we can do this. If I click the expression button and I will clear this, let's use, if we go to the uh, recently used expressions at the bottom, let's go to where we made minimal circles. And I'll make it minus 5,000 and click OK, OK and apply. Notice sometimes it's easy to make mistakes. So I'll delete this. Let's 
try that again. Minimal circle, then open bracket, then dollar sign geometry. All right, and then comma, and then 500, because that was segments. Okay, that's gonna give us a minimal circle. Okay, and apply. And then what we did last time was configure symbol, and then use buffer, open bracket, and it was gonna be minus 4,000, I think, worked quite well. Minus. Okay, that should work. Apply that. Now, last of all, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make this only apply in Scotland. So if I go to configure symbol, the geometry generator, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write case when, I'll click the expression button to do this, case when, and if I scroll to fields and values, I've got a country column in my data set. So case when country equals Scotland, then buffer it with a minimal circle and so on. Else, so we type in else, and I'll just type in dollar sign geometry. And then I'll type in end. Like I said, it doesn't matter how many, uh, how much white space you have. I usually add hit return a couple of times to give myself some white space so it's easier to read. So before I apply this, I'll just decipher it. I'm telling QJS, in cases when the country column says Scotland in it, then apply this geometry generator. Otherwise, else, just draw it with a normal geometry. And I just put end at the end of the expression. So if I click OK, OK and apply, you can see what happens. So there's loads of different ways you can use Geometry Generator to style things and to make things look different. You're not actually creating any new shapes or any new, any new files, no new shape files or anything. It just allows you to be really flexible, use your imagination and do all sorts of interesting things with map styles in QGIS.